When I read Revelations about the tribulations that is to come, I was stunned. Why is nobody talking more about this? You know, Revelation things six or seven or eight um, talks about the hundred and forty-four thousand, which is a which is a perfect number of those who are going to be written in the name. Uh, whose name is going to be written in the book of life. But there, there's also another group that, that uh, that's, come, uh, that's come out of the uh, time of tribulation. And uh, Jesus said that the time of tribulation has been shortened for the sake of the elect. Because if that has not been shortened, no one would have been saved. So... That tribulation is so intense, so difficult that people will be giving up following the faith. There'll be so much pressure, so much opposition, antagonism, hostility. It's existential reason just to try to stay alive with your faith. So it was so bad. I, I don't know the exact details, but it's going to be so bad. And the, it's so bad that until the Lord has to shorten the time, the period of tribulation. Tribulation means time of great distress, time of great sufferings, etc. So that's what we're dealing with. If you read the entire book of, um, book of Revelations, it's all about the everything you can summarize it with one word, supernatural. Everything is supernatural. The world we live in seems to be the antithesis of the world in Revelations. It's diag diagonally opposite, everything opposite of Revelations. There is a, such a huge disconnect between our world that we live in now and the world that is in revelations so what is going on with the world now and the world in the book of revelations there's a huge chasm between us but that chasm is supposed to be crossed by us that dichotomy is not supposed to be there because because revelation is the, that will be the sort of the end result of of what it would be like it's not now not yet but it will be that way so so if, if we don't feel if we don't see the supernatural now we'll be totally not ready for the supernatural that is coming in the book of Revelations. And that requires us to understand, to live like it. That, you know, there's a huge disconnect. My video today, this, this short video, is an it's a attempt, it's my attempt to try to bridge that disconnect a little bit. And hopefully progressively we we'll all move towards that direction. I ought to say that from the, in terms of denominations, um, the Pentecostal charismatic is probably the best grasp of the supernatural because, because they believe in that more <laughs> than any other denominations. Theological. Theology makes all the difference, you see. It depends on what you teach. You are shaped by what you are taught. You are shaped by what you read. The fact that I'm so reformed in my theology, my thinking, is because I'm so influenced by my, the, by my seminary and, uh, and the reformed theology, which really captured my imagination. The Calvinist theology, for once, for instance, is huge. I love it. But I'm also from a charismatic church background. I have a lot of charismatic theology intact. For example, 
the gift of the spirit the the gift of healing the gift of uh, speaking tongues the gift of prophecy all this gift is completely silenced uh, in my in my seminary in my theological world right now but it's not silent within me it's within me it is still burning it is it's it's i don't <coughs> i don't see it a conflict between um, God, science, the gift of the Spirit, and the teaching of the Word of God uh, in the Reformed theology at all. In fact, they go hand in hand together. I would love to produce a book on that um, in the future. So, my, what I'm trying to say is, because we're so far removed from the supernatural, including many evangelical Christians, the result of which is that we are not that bothered with the fear of God and, and uh, the reverence towards God. Granted, if we are deeply convicted of all the word of God, the joy and exuberant and the, and the faithfulness and the redemptive historical act of Christ and the grace of God. I'm not worthy, but he's, he, he's done everything for me. But not many people, not many Christians are reformed. A lot of evangelicals are not reformed. So I'm saying that because, even reformed, the, 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 the fear of God, I mean, the supernatural, the supernatural definitely. It's a very different way of seeing things, of seeing it. In the book of Tribulation, the one that I'm bringing up is exactly the kind that, that should really bring us closer and greater to the fear of God, the reverence of God, and what is coming. And if we are deeply impressed in our hearts, and make us to be much more aware of the supernatural in the sense that we're seeing it, the supernatural now. Not only when we see the Lord in heaven, uh, when the supernatural begins to open up to us, we see angels flying, or whatever the case may be. When thy kingdom comes on earth, when it is on earth, supernatural has to happen because the kingdom of God is supernatural. When the people uh, uh, are saved from tribulation, the entire tribulation is supernatural. It's a satanic forces oppressing the church, oppressing any Christians following Christ. That is supernatural. What do you think that is? Of course, when it says supernatural, it's not like plagues dropping from the sky, you know, like in Moses' Egypt time. No dividing of the Red Sea. Nothing of that sort, I don't believe. But I'm telling you, the supernatural is you can feel it in the air. <laughs> in what sense? The darkness, the speech, the attitude of the people is going to be Grippingly sad. Um, for example, the the universal control of the monetary system. The six is six number, which is a metaphoric number. And uh, if you don't have that 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 number system, if you don't, if you don't conscribe to a certain system, be part of the system, part of the gang, part of the group then you won't be able to buy food, for example. There's exactly uh, the effect prophesied in the book of Revelations of the uh, number of the beast. That beast, believe me, is, is uh, rearing its ugly head already now, bit by bit. 
So that's supernatural. We have to guard that so that we can fight it. You know, we'd be much more uh, conscious, much more diligent, much more aware of all these things, all this devastation coming. Now that we begin to live a life more worthy of the Lord, more in line with the calling of God, more holiness. It's not like I live for the parties weekend and God is somehow not that important. It's not really in my, in my radar because I don't think it's that important. You see, that statement, I don't think God is that important, comes from the fact that you are totally unaware of the supernatural. When I say supernatural, it comes from both sides. The dark side, the demonic suppression, oppression, and the deception, and the, the light of the kingdom of God, the brightness of the kingdom, the light of God, to expose the darkness, deliver us, and bring us into the kingdom of darkness. You see, one of the greatest acts of this, uh, of this act of darkness is deception. Seriously, it is the deception again. It's theology. Don't you see? You are what you, what you learn. You become what you learn. You become what you have learned in the theology that's been taught you in the church. You become what the poopy preachers in your church and the hearsay the, and anything and everything. So that is so important that we understand that deception is horrifying. One of the greatest deception of the enemy is, if you like some of the terms like brainwash, for example, brainwash you to tell you that your gender is fluid, case in point. You become who you are, you decide for yourself. You don't get to decide who you are. That's a fact. If you get to decide who you want to be, there is no absolute then. Anybody can be anything they want to. Whoa, there's a dangerous word, there's anarchy. It's like there's no law. There is no absolute reference. When I said the word absolute, that is, that is from God. Only God holds that absolute, you see. If you take God out of the equation, out of the discussion, out of your life, out of life, out of your sphere, then you, you can lost, you're feeling very lost because there is no frame of reference anymore. There is no absolute anymore. You're walking in, groping in the dark because everyone has an, has an idea. Everyone has an opinion. You know, but which one doesn't matter in the end? Which one decides which is right? You have to go back to God. A godless society is a directionless society. It's hugely dangerous. And guess what? If God is out of the equation, then something else will fill that void and it's called the spirit of darkness, the spirit of deception. It can be manifested in the form of what? Manifest in the form of social media, dictating, controlling, influencing your behavior, your children's behavior. We have heard enough of all these disasters and tragedies happening, you know? So the list goes on. If we don't wake up and and begin to awaken our soul to the supernatural and what God is doing. Well, you see, we, we may not see that so tangibly now, but guess what? If you read the book of Revelation, you see it so tangibly. You feel it in the air. It's almost so thick, you can feel it in the air. And with that, you will be able to say, my goodness. Imagine if you, if, if, if you and I were transported to you know, let's say a thousand years from today, later, and that'll be the time of revelation, that the, the world has wrapped up. And, and uh, just before it wrapped up, we had to go through tribulations. 
you see what's going on. You see the satanic power so real. It's like a movie, everything. And, and, uh, and you say, wow, if you don't kowtow to that, you're not gonna eat. They won't let you eat. They won't just spend your credit card. You can't buy anything. You need that credit number. You need that information. You need to sign up. And by signing up, you give away your allegiance, your faith to Christ free. And for instance, that this is a very, very real, valid, possibly true scenario. And when that happens, at that time, tribulation, and you look back to today, my goodness, I wish I'd been more cognizant, more aware of this kind of things coming. I would live a very, very different life. I would be drawn far so much more closer to God, to hear Him, to walk with Him, because I know it's supernatural, it's coming, and it's already here. I just regret that I didn't know better. Folks, this is a short video, 16 minutes. I'm gonna break into two videos that you know, supernatural. Everything about Christ on earth is supernatural. He walked on the water, He raised the dead, he opened the eyes of the blind. He raised the cripple, opened the ears of the deaf. Um, and he cleansed the leprous skin. On and on and on. Everything is, lepr is supernatural. Paul's ministry. Even Paul and Peter's handkerchief dropped onto the sick. They got healed. The, the cripple get raised up just by the handkerchief of Paul and the Peter. The, 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 in, the what do you call this? Supernatural miraculous is unattainable even in the in the realm of imagination in today's terms and what's wrong with this we are missing out even though just because we a lot of people Christians don't believe in the gift of the Spirit anymore which is a really sad thing and and uh, at least be cognizant of the of the truly supernatural coming and change your life and it will change everything they become much more aware of the presence of God the fear of God being so much more stronger and you're much more walking in a way worthy of the Lord and glorified to Him. Amen.